going to summarize uh, pastor's message uh, this morning. Let's give Jesus a round of applause for the boldness of our pastor to, to speak in English. Amen. And this should encourage all of you to, uh, to step out and speak in your language. Amen. Uh, to other people about Jesus Christ. And pastor mentioned that your purpose is not determined by your circumstances. So because you're in America and you're saying that, well, I don't speak the language, therefore I don't have to tell people about Jesus. Or maybe you're saying, you know what, I'm not one of those talkative people. I only like to gossip. But I can't talk about Jesus. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Amen. Your circumstances do not determine your purpose. When our church came, we did not stop and simply said we're going to have a church that's only for the Russians or the Ruskies and it's not going to involve our community. Our church is going to be for all the nations, for all the tribes. Amen. And you see the resemblance of that today, that we had to pay a price. Pastor also mentioned that we have to not settle for a portion of what God wants to do in our life. We need to, we need to aim for maximum. When you go to the store, for example, if you go to a restaurant and or fast food restaurant because at the fast food you have to pay first before you get your before you get your meal let's say you go to Jack in the Box after church Jack in the Box and you order Jack spicy curly fries and you get a large Dr. Pepper okay 15 minutes into it they only give you curly fries now you will be happy with the curly fries you will ask for ranch mayo and ketchup mix mayo and ketchup together and dip the curly fries and eat it that's how i would do it and then 30 minutes into it they gave you big large dr pepper but you never got the jack spicy what would you do would you remind yourself that it's better to be thankful for curly fries because people in like other countries don't even have that no you will have an attitude you will go to the counter and you say it says here jack spicy where is jack that's exactly what you're gonna do and you're gonna demand for jack spicy to be delivered to you if they don't deliver jack spicy we're gonna have world war three a jack in the box because you are a demanding person you know what belongs to you you know what's unreceived and you deserve its price has been paid and therefore you're not gonna saddle for french fry for fries and for dr pepper you are gonna aim for the fullness amen jesus on the cross has paid a price for you to have a fullness you may say but i don't deserve it's not about you it's what jesus paid on the cross for you and therefore you cannot just settle for french fries mayo and ketchup you have to realize that god wants you to aim for the fullness can somebody say amen that's right and therefore today when you are in church and this is not just to encourage you right now what we are going to do is we're going to pray for that you are going to pray for that if you have not got your jack spicy this is going to be a moment where you're going to tell the devil so listen devil my health belongs to me and no not because i lived as a nun for 15 years and not because i was a priest for 20 but because jesus paid on the cross with the great suffering and therefore today with boldness i demand my health to be given back to me in jesus name amen same thing comes about marriage the marriage is god's will for me that financial blessing is god's will for my life that peace and joy pastor also mentioned one more point he said that for God to bring restoration into your personal life you have to be involved in his restoration for humanity what that means is that we all have to pledge ourselves it's forgive me for misusing this word or using it maybe out of a theological context to help God to allow God to use us to bring restoration to people so that they will meet Jesus when you pledge your life to help other people find Jesus while you still have things that need to be restored in your personal life when you commit your life to help God God commits to help you I heard a story of one father whose son was lost here in the United States he went missing for weeks his son was uh, 17 or 18 years of age they posted 
the flyers all around his city and the newspaper everywhere for the missing son and months passed and he never heard from his son and this was unlike of his son because his son wasn't involved with bad crowd he wasn't involved with drugs and he wasn't involved with any gangs there was no ransom calls to you know get money for his son and he wasn't even wealthy himself and in the middle of that he was doing everything that he could until one day he came to his house and he broke down and he started to cry and he started to tell God God I commit my life to you he wasn't a Christian he says I commit my life to you and he says God if it took losing my son for finding me for you to find me here I am and he says and I said God if you bring my son it's gonna be a great joy but I realized that you were trying to find me because it's not only my son who was missing I was missing too and God found him and the interesting part the next day he found his son sometimes our physical needs money family finances career we, we make them so important but they're not as important as God's purpose to help other people come to Jesus you have to make that your priority help other people come to Jesus how do you do that by bringing them to a home group by starting a home group yourself one day you may say but Vlad you don't understand there's still many things that need to be worked out in my life God sees that and God is gonna help you but you must understand your needs cannot be the most important his needs when you make his needs most important God pledges himself to say okay now let's work on you the best marriage advice I heard before we were married me and my wife went to a marriage seminar in Vancouver and one particular elderly couple already they said this they said all of you who are dating couples here listen up they said if you make it your goal to build God's house God will make it his priority to build yours he says when you will try to drag God to build your home it will fall he says in this culture with pornography on the rise divorce on the rise temptation on the rise morality washed out he says your home will fall he says but when you make your purpose to build his home he says God will go back and build yours we've seen this with my family and I see this with families all around that my purpose is to build God's house and God commits himself to build mine can somebody say amen and I want to challenge you today I want to draw you in today to say that God wants you to reach your full potential but please understand the way to reach that full potential it's not I'm gonna wait here until God blesses everything and then I'm gonna go do something to God no starting today I commit my life to fulfill the purpose of God and I will be fighting and praying that God's purpose in my life will be fulfilled for the glory of God can somebody say amen